Hi, it's Chris, K2CJB, and welcome back to K2CJB Radio here on YouTube. Today, we're going to do a repair, hopefully, uh, do some troubleshooting. I was operating the CQ Worldwide contest about a week ago, and everything was working fine. I had my Azu FTDX3000, and I was running into my Mosley TA33 Junior up on the roof. Everything was working fine. I got to work 43 countries and made about 70 contacts. I wasn't really in the contest, per se. I just spent a couple hours on Saturday and Sunday. So here we are a week later, last Saturday, I flipped the radio on and go to tune up on 20 meters into the TA33 Junior, and I was getting a high SWR alert on the radio. So um, I did some troubleshooting, and it uh, looks like we have to do some work on the antenna. Let me just show you all the troubleshooting I've done so far. Well, here we are in the shack. This is 20 meters. And we're hearing some signals, right? But I want to show you something. I'm going to go to an open frequency here, and I'm going to try to tune. See that? High SWR alert. So the, S the FTDX3000 has some protective circuitry in it where if there's a high SWR, uh, it will not allow the transmitter to come on, even the low power, to, for the antenna tuner to work. So now let's throw an antenna analyzer on the feed going up to the antenna. What I do want to say, though, is that the first thing I did when I saw this problem was I said, okay, let's make sure the, the cable is good from the radio up to the antenna. So I went up on the roof and I put a clip lead across the two leads that where the antenna cable is connected to the antenna, came back down here into the shack, took the connector off the back of the radio and put an ohmmeter across it and it was dead short. Went back up, took the clip lead off, came back down and checked it, it was open. So we knew the cable was good. I also inspected the cable path throughout the house, no kinks, nothing like that. So the next thing I did do was put an antenna analyzer on it and that's what we're gonna take a look at now. Another thing I want to point out here is that this problem only appears on 20 meters and 15 meters. It does not appear on 10 meters. 10 meters tunes up just fine. And now we'll take a look at it with the antenna analyzer and see what's going on. First thing we're going to do is set a center frequency for the SWR scan. We'll set it to 21 megahertz. That way we'll, we'll set the scan to include 14 up to 28 megahertz, 20 to 10 meters. So we'll pick that. And now when we go here, you'll see that I have already selected a 10, plus or minus 10 kilohertz span. So now when we check the SWR, watch this. Now it comes down there, there's a spot. And you'll see that it is resonant below 15 meters. But now when it comes up into the range it would be 10 meters, it's fine. And just to show that, we're going to move the cursor down here. And you'll see that's about 18 megahertz. And if we go a little further down, you'll see we'll go right through 20. And we're resonant at about 13 megahertz. And we go all the way up the other way. And you will see that this is in the 10 meter range up here. Here we go. See, 28, 20, and it's resonant up there. So the issue is 15 and 20. Now I did some research online and our friends at Mosley have put together this nice little troubleshooting uh, document for their trap antennas. And when you read through all this, it sort of explains a few things about how the traps work and that sort of thing. But I want you to take a look right here. In the cases where a high SWR is obtained on 15 and 20 meters and a normal SWR is obtained on 10, the indications are that something is wrong with the 15 meter traps. These traps are located on the outboard ends of the trap assemblies and are on the other end of the trap assemblies containing the 10 meter trap. So that means another trip to the roof and we will have to take the traps apart. First thing I want to do is just get the antenna pointed the right way. I'm going to go after the driven element traps first. Um, they're closest to the peak of the house. You'll see when we get up there. All right, here we are on the roof of the antenna. Here's the first trap I'm going to work on. It's on the driven element. There's a screw right here that I have access to. Hopefully the stuff that Mosley gives you to assemble the antenna with will allow me to just pull this rod out and be able to bring this whole assembly down to the ground to work on it. Before disassembly, a couple of marks with a Sharpie so I remember how to put it back together. Here we are, safe and sound, back on the ground. And I've took off both sides of the driven element. These are the trap assemblies of the driven element. Now, here's something I'm seeing. I'm seeing some green on the weep hole side. Hmm. So, let's open them up and see what we have. I slid the seal back, and if you look, there's a little bit of stuff here. Could be causing some sort of a, a path. Um, 
the way I understand it from Mosley, I remove this screw, I can disconnect this wire, and that disconnects the coil on this side, and I should be able to simply pull this out. Let's see how that goes. Okay, I pulled the trap apart, and look at this. It looks like the form is cracked. And there's a dent on it. I don't know how that happened. I did notice a little bit of moisture on the coil. Um, and when I took it out, there may be, yeah, there's a little bit right here, you can kind of see it. Um, but this is interesting. I'm going to disassemble the other side and see what we get there. This is the other side, and you'll see that there is still this dent, but the core is in one piece. Nothing's cracked like we have on this one. So I'm thinking this is my problem. <laughs> it looks like this uh, form for this trap is, is broken. So I had a thought. Since it's broken, and I may have to replace it anyway, let me just see if I could jam it back together. It's really tight. It's really form fit. So I took a piece of PVC, slid it over the rod, the element, tapped it like this, and now look at this. It's all back together. And you know what? I'm going to assemble it back up on the roof and see what happens. I've reassembled everything after cleaning all the pieces out and drying it all off. Um, hey, let's see if that little fix works. Things are all reassembled. I did use a Sharpie, but I think next time around I would make a ring around where the antenna should stop and also a line so I can line things up. It's kind of tough seeing those little screw holes when you're looking up. <laughs> You'll get to watch this with me. Let's see how things work. Frequency, 21, good. And now let's go to SWR. Here it goes. Hey, I think we might have fixed it. I think we might have fixed the antenna. Let's see, let's scroll up into, uh, yep. Well, yeah, it's somewhere in 15. That looks good to me. Now let's get down this way. And the, yeah. All right, I'm going to uh, can reconnect it to the radio and see if it tunes. Well, we're seeing a lot more signals on 20 meters than we were before. All right. Let's go up here. This is a quiet spot, looks like. All right, here we go. And she's tuning. There we go. The antenna is repaired. Let's try 15 meters to make sure we got both bands working. Yes. So that's what it took. So we know the core has a crack in it, um, but it was a really, really tight fit. I mean, I couldn't push that in and out by hand. I had to use that little PVC trick, and I saw that online somewhere. I forgot who did it, or else I give him credit for it. Um, but as you see, the radio's tuning up, the SWR is fine, so that's a good sign. We know what the problem is. I think in retrospect, what I should have done was probably put a little bit of glue on it to hold that together. Um, I'm thinking with, you know, with heat and cold, it may re-expand and separate again. Uh, if that happens, I'll know where the problem is. I'll go up and glue it. And if that doesn't work, then um, we can contact our friends at Mosley and get a replacement part. But the good news is we're back in business. We're back on the air. So hope this helps some of you if you have a problem like this. I understand the Cushcraft A3 is very similar in construction. And if you have a problem with that, where two of the three bands are not tuning up, like 15 and 20, maybe you have a problem with one of your traps. I started with the driven element. That was just kind of a hunch. So hope this helps. Um, thanks for watching the channel. 73 from K2 CJB.